All right, so it looks like we are live. Excellent. So welcome everyone. Very interesting um, thing that we're doing here tonight and I don't think it's ever been done before, particularly in the floristry industry. So welcome everyone. Welcome everyone that's live online as well. So we've got um, a beautiful group of people here and a beautiful group of people at home. So it's very exciting to be able to present to you all tonight. Uh, I'll go through some housekeeping in a moment. But firstly, I just want to make sure that we're all in the right place. Everyone's here to learn how to flower, make a flower walk tonight, aren't they? Yes, absolutely excellent. So we are all in, this, in the right place then. Um, so with the online, uh, there's a chat role. So you'll be able to um, punch in some questions. Also, just let me know that you're here as well. So I'll be able to see, see who's here. Let me know you're here. Let me know that you can hear everything as well and that you can see everything um, as you need also. So we'll have some live questions coming from the, the group here and then you'll be able to post your questions as well. So pipe, post them down. I'll be able to see them as we're going along. We've also got the beautiful Natalie and Alyssa here tonight. So they're also helping. So you'll see them as they come in to, to help. So we've got two styles of flower walls that we're going to present. Um, one a little bit more budget and one is more traditional. So it's exciting to be able to present them to you and show you um, the step-by-step -step instructions of how it all goes together. Should you wish to receive the, um, you know, the PDF version of the photos, where to get all the bits and pieces from as well, then you can join our Butters Club Premium. So the Butters Club, to me, to give you a bit of an understanding of what the Butters Club is, some have already um, attended the online versions before. So the Butters Club is a monthly event. So how are you monthly? Um, so you can come live or you can join live online, either way. And we're gonna to present to you lots of different um, styles in demonstrating, show you the newest and latest techniques and, um, and products as well that become available. So suppliers will be showing them to us first and then we'll be showing them to you first. Um, so that's free and that's once a month. Then we also have the premium version available, which is really exciting. And that's an online membership. Uh, it's a great community. There's a private Facebook page for you to join. And also you'll be getting those PDF versions of where can I get it? What, what is it firstly? And how do I put it all together? Um, you'll also get uh, some free advice as well. Um, and so there's like Q and A's um, is probably the best way to explain it. So you can email in any questions on things and we'll be there to answer them for you. You also get discounts and offers, not just from us, but also from um, our favourite friends who we purchase things from. And, and not, no, it's not just showing you where to purchase them, but also who to purchase them from, which is, which is really important. Um, and sometimes difficult when you're starting out in floristry to know where you can get all your bits and pieces from. So are there any questions before we get started on the actual demonstration. So whether it's online or um, the base page here. So any questions here? No? I'm just gonna check online and see if we've got anything here. So we've got lots of people here, terrific. Excellent. And everybody seems to be hearing, wonderful. So hi Sarah, hi Anna, nice to, nice to see you're all here. Megan and Helga as well, so welcome. Lots of people online and all saying, yep, we've got the ones very excited and all hearing and all here. So wonderful. Let's get started then on the demonstration. Um, I might call on Natalie to come and um, give me a hand first. What we're going to do in a, in a bit of the, um, uh, the inspiration that goes along with putting this together, um, this first flower wall that we're going to show you is um, what you could do for a budget event. Uh, I think it's perfect for a wedding. And um, as you can see, this is the artificial turf that we've attached here to um, just some trellis. So really inexpensive trellis. And uh, it's just staple gunned the um, roll of artificial turf onto that. And then um, if you can see from the longer shot, which we'll get to everyone online, um, those who can see, there's the, it just keeps going, it's like a carpet roll. And what you could do, if it was for a wedding, is you could keep that, 
that grass, keep that carpet going all the way down and that can become the aisle as well. So you might like to have some flower arrangements down the side there too. So it can just keep going. So what Natalie's going to do is help me attach, um, we've got some garland here that we're going to attach. So that's why I haven't taken the grass all the way to the top of the trellis because we want to be able to use that trellis to attach the garland to. Okay. Um, so these are, this is a, a short cut version of the garlands um, and they come in 10 metre long lengths. So you can get those um, and just soak them. So which we've done, we've pre-soaked, pre-soaked along, we've cut and measured the length that we want first. Because these guys are really expensive, so you don't want to soak more than what you need. You can't really soak them again. So, measuring what you need, and then cutting, and then soaking is what you do. So, they become quite heavy once they've been soaked. So, Natalie and I are going to use some cable ties, um, and perhaps even some you know, the, um, fishing line as well. So you can use fishing line or cable ties to attach it, other is fine. So if you're using um, maybe something that's very fine or not a lot of flowers, then I would suggest using the fishing line because you won't be able to um, you know, cover up the cable ties as easily just because they're thicker. So for tonight we're going to use the cable ties. So it is good to have a friend to help. So it's great being you know, having a large community of, of florists and friends around you to help put these things together. But it can be done on your own just by laying this down, but much easier um, if you can do it in the place. So, we've decided we have three tails down, so just like that. We'll hold it in its place and then we'll pop the cable ties and attach them to that one. So, if you're, if this is, um, for an event where you can't do it on site. So you would need to make the arrangement first. So you can actually put all the flowers into these garlands, pre-soaked, just laying it on a flat bench and working on it. And then when you get to the venue, you would attach it just like this. Okay, so we want to make sure it's nice and secure. So we're going to run, yeah, thank you, run the cable ties um, between each each log. Okay, so they get uh, quite a bit of weight in them. So what I've got on the floor here is some um, sandbag weights. So you could, if you, uh, let's say it was a garden wedding and you didn't have any way, um, you didn't have spikes at the bottom to be able to dig into the ground, um, or perhaps it's going to be a really windy day and you're not even going to trust that the spikes might be enough to hold it into the ground. These sandbag weights can be really handy to have on deck. Um, and you can cover them up by putting a pot plant or a flower arrangement in front of them. So you could have them on either side. Thanks, Natalie. And then we can go through at the end and cut, cut these off. So they're probably a little bit hard to see for those of you online, but the, the tails are sticking out there. Okay, so we can cut them off at the end. So now what Natalie and I will um, commence doing is uh, popping the flowers and the material through this. So we're going to start with, we've got some beautiful peppercorn and looking for, an, looking for foliages and materials that are going to trail. Um, is going to help get the shape that you're wanting. So, um, you know, it's much easier in floristry if we work with the materials that we've got and the shapes and the angles that they're working with. Okay, so 
perfect is the uh, is the best point for this. We want to get that training down nicely. Okay, so it's almost like um, an arc. So now we're going to start on that side, uh, just putting the peppercorn in. So we're not going, we're not coming out too far into this section, um, and it's just going to be like a waterfall sort of draping shape down here. Okay, so not, not huge amounts, because remembering this one's this one's the budget one, so we're not going too overboard. It's very um, I find it anyway very easy to get carried away and go overboard. But um, yeah, we've got to stick to budgets. Okay, so it doesn't matter terribly much where you start. It's making sure that the ends are nice, nice and neat because we don't, you can see, we don't have a lot of foam. There's not a lot of um, depth. To work with in the phone, so we want to keep the, the stems nice and neat. So any you know um, rough bits off the edge, we just need to trim, and we need to keep it um, clean. The, the maximum length that we'll take that to, and then we'll take it all the way around. So we'll keep going with that, um, and then shortly Alyssa will come in and give us a hand and we'll get cutting and we'll, we'll keep going with it. So um, the colour choice for this one, we're going to be going with some oranges and purples, um, and a bit of yellow as well, so just to, to really brighten it up and sort of really stand out against this, against this green. So we're not going with groupings in this design. It's just nice and evenly distributed all the way through. From the live crowd here, yes, we've got one. Um, if you were making a just, just an art, sure, how to do just an art, could you? Um, I can't remember what they're called, but we could use the garland, the garland yeah. as well. It yeah, could be a similar technique. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, you could use the garland. You can, um, I'll also show you what other things you can use. It depends on how big the arch is. Um, the other products that you can use are the, the bats, so that's the, the smaller version. There's a larger version than this, it's slightly larger. Um, you can also use these double cages as well. There's the single, so this fits one brick. They come with the bricks already in them though, but you can um, reuse them. So you can clip the guard out and put a fresh brick in. You don't have to throw these out completely. Um, so yeah, depending on the size, then you would just decide on which one you were going to use. Or yes, you could use the garland, yeah. Um, particularly if it's just in the corners of the arches, then you would go with these. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to check if we've got any questions online as well. So how are we all going online? Oh, looking good. Okay. Anything about the foliage? Someone's saying they haven't seen anything about the foliage. All right. Um, so with the live, it's the 20 second delay, um, but there's no delay in the voice. So um, unless you've seen comments about the foliage, it seems there's a lot of. Ah, okay. Yep. So there's questions about the um, the wastage. 
pin, attaching the foam garland. So, Anne Marie, uh, no, Gabby, sorry. Gabby, it seems like there's a lot of waste. Is there any recyclable options for the flower brick? So, uh, the flower foam, I assume that that's what you're talking about. Gabby, so the, the flower foam, there are some products now becoming available in the States um, and they're made out of, it's like a soil material, um, but it's still not quite right. So it's not complete and it's not ready, but it is very exciting though because I can't wait to be able to use something other than, than the floral foam. Um, it's been fantastic and great for our industry, but it's not great for our environment, unfortunately. So, yeah, so good question, Gabby. It is coming. Um, it's, it's on its way, but until it's quite right and ready, then we, we, can't, we can't use it and it's getting it to Australia as well, but, but we're on it. We're getting there. Um, all right, so Anne-Marie also just missed attaching the foam garland. So, um, so Anne-Marie, what we did with the foam garland was that we used cable ties to attach it through the top of the trellis. Um, so hopefully you'll get to see that. Um, or, yeah, if you join the Butters Club, then you'll get to see a replay of it um, and also get the PDF versions of it as well. All right. So that's coming along nicely. That's a good amount of the, um, the pepper ball to start with. And now we'll start getting some flowers in as well. So this is the exciting and most fun part. Um, so we're going to start off with the orange roses and the trichelium. So, so the purple um, trichelium, gorgeous flower, absolutely, absolutely stunning. Um, and it comes in the white as well. Okay, so uh, spelling it, it's T R A C H E L I U M. Hopefully, if someone online um, sees it differently, then they can uh, correct it. But I'm pretty sure that's that's right. Okay. So yeah, it's a really pretty, really pretty fluffy flower. Um, just gorgeous. So we might hand one of those around to the people here in Adelaide to have a little look at it up close. Because um, as I said, yeah, it's not always available. It's not readily available. Um, so, Natalie will start with um, popping some of the orange roses around that side and then I'll come in over the top with the trichelium, so a little swap, um, and I'll do the orange roses on this side as well. And so, we're coming in quite short as well, we don't need to, we don't need to go in really deep. Um, one of the other things I like to do with the roses, because these are the gorgeous um, locally grown roses, uh, we like to use the foliage as well. So you can cut it just like that. So you cut the stem out and then you've still got the foliage there to use. And again, that gets cut nice and short. You want the foliage to be even shorter, shorter than the bloom. And then the bloom can go in over the top. So it still looks quite natural when you use the, the rose foliage and then the, the bloom on top of it um, rather than having it sort of interspersed all throughout. So it looks funny to see rose foliage, you know, not, not the bloom. We want to do it that way. If, however, the foliage isn't of good quality every now and then, um, you know, it might be damaged, then we won't use it. here is just even distribution. So we're just evenly spreading the roses throughout. Um, we want to also be able to see the roses from any viewpoints as well. So if I'm standing on, on the side here, um, so you know maybe I'm the best man at the wedding and I want to be able to you know see some rocks, see some flowers as well. Um, just as much as the person in the front or down the back. So from any viewpoint we're going to get to see them. Oh, 
a question here. All right, so um, one question was what should I join to get the PDF? Um, so perhaps, sorry, you missed just the, in the beginning, um, just the Butters Club. I will explain the Butters Club again at the end, but um, just briefly, the Butters Club is, um, is an online community, but it's also um, a community if you're here in Melbourne that you can actually physically come to as well. Or if you're not from Melbourne, then maybe you would just like to come and visit us at some point. Um, and so, yeah, you'll have access to us and questions. You'll have um, access to a private Facebook group as well. Um, and access to every um, live demonstration to watch the recording of it over and over again. Um, and also the PDFs of every everything that we make. So you can get step-by-step -step instructions as well as where to purchase your materials from um, and how to put it all together. So which I'll talk through a little bit more towards the end. So how's that coming along, Natalie? Yeah. Looking really good. good. Excellent. Just just a few more on that side. And then we can move into um, popping in the trahelion. Okay, and that colour is just going to add so much to it. It's going to be fantastic. Um, so we might just move if we can. Yeah, thanks. All the way through, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you can hold it. Okay. Any other questions here? Yeah. How expensive is the trahelia? Uh, it's it's just like quite average price, so okay. it's approximately seven to eight dollars yeah. a bunch. A bunch. Yeah. And what would you use if that wasn't readily available? Sure. Um, I've got a substitute here, actually. I'll be able to show you. So, um, substitutions, like that's a really good uh, topic to talk about. Um, I would suggest for this, I would use the um, purple lithianthus. It's similar in size and it's similar in colour. Usually when we're wanting to substitute something, and we have to do it a lot in the floristry industry, us florists have to be super flexible because there's plenty of times where we go to the supplier, turn up, and what we've ordered is not there um, because simply it wasn't available. So we always have to have plan B, plan C, um, all backed up, um, ready to go. And so using colour and using size and using shape, which are the elements of principles, um, the elements of design, I beg your pardon. Um, so using those is a really good way of discovering, okay, what is going to work for this? Is it the size that I'm after that I really need to replace? Because maybe you're doing something that's a particular size and you need to fill those spots. So you need something of similar size then. Um, perhaps it's something that um, that is a particular colour and your client or yourself or um, whoever it might be has to have that colour and that's right for that emotion and that occasion, then you would be choosing something of similar colour to substitute it with. Um, the other is the shape as well. So this, the shape of something can be really important. Again, it depends on the design. So you know, for this design, if we had a long flower, like a snapdragon or a delphinium, um, that wouldn't that just wouldn't really work as well. You could do it, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as good. So those three elements, there's five elements of um, design. Those three in particular for me are the top ones of what am I going to substitute for? So how are we going? Looking looking very good. Excellent. Um, so next we've got to put in a gorgeous dahlias. Um, they're absolutely stunning. We'll get those. And this is an orange. Excellent. So they can go in. And again, just evenly dispersed. 
all the way through. So with this, um, to get them evenly distributed and dispersed throughout, because we've already got that colour, the orange, in there, then we want to make sure that the dahlias are going in between the roses, not directly next to the roses, because then from a distance, it can be hard to make out the rose from the dahlia. Up close, obviously, it's really obvious. Um, but from afar, and if you're arriving at it, let's say it's an out, it is a garden wedding that you're arriving at, and you could be, you know, a few hundred metres away that you're walking towards it, it will just look like big blobs of orange and it will it will just be mixed in. Um, and so that's not, not what we're after here. So we just want those colours nice and evenly distributed so we can see them. So it's looking gorgeous. So working with the garlands, um, they do have that netting on them. So I'll just show you that again. That netting on the garland. So it's quite a tight, um, it's quite a tight net. And so uh, you want to make sure that those stems are definitely going through the net and then through into that foam. Uh, just like then, I was trying to get that dahlia through, and it was getting stuck on the netting. So I had to move it and make sure it's going in between the net and straight into the foam so that it is actually in the foam and drinking. Okay. Um, so the flowers are going to drink out of these you know, for a, a, quite a few days, but they need to be kept wet. So if you were going to make this, uh, let's say again for a wedding, um, then you would definitely be fully soaking it the day before, but wetting it again on the day of the wedding. Okay. Um, again, it does depend on the, the temperature. If it's a really hot, you know, 40 degree day, then you want to be getting there pretty much last minute and, and getting it up in place and wetting it as well. So just using a little spray bottle to get in and wet that foam as well. What I have seen some florists do, and it's I think it's a really smart move, particularly for outdoor weddings, is a, an arch like this or a, or a flower wall. They will cover it with wet material or wet tissue or wet towels and lay it over the top and then just before the ceremony, pull it off. So they're for those you know, 40 degree day outdoor wedding where you can't do anything about it and they haven't wanted natives. <laughs> <laughs> if they want native flowers, great, but you suggest it. But if it's not with the theme, then that's not with the theme and you've got to go with it and you've got to do the best you can. All right, so we're going to keep going. And um, we're going to add in some of the yellow roses as well and then finish off with some amaranthus. All right, looking good. I'll just check if we've got any online question. Could you use... Good question. Um, could you use a bunch of grapes? Absolutely. Grapes look spectacular particularly if you've got some vine as well to put in there and just sort of tie the whole thing together. And if it's for a, a winery wedding, a wedding at a winery, then spot on, perfect. Then I would suggest to also then bring that into the table centrepieces as well. Grapes, bunches of grapes look gorgeous in table centrepieces, particularly if they're the um, style that's very grouped and, and quite low-lying sort of table centrepieces. Um, that can look fantastic. So, yes, most definitely go with grapes. Good question. Thank you. Does the weight cause an issue on, on something like that with grapes? Does the what, sorry? Weight. The weight cause an issue? Um, I'd be wiring them in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so great question. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so if you are using grapes, you need to wire the bunch of grapes in. Um, yes, good one. All right. Excellent. So the, the yellow gives it a completely different um, dimension now and really really lightens it up. It's looking good. I'll get the amaranthus. Actually, I think 
somebody may follow you to the end, right? See? Just a bit of um, body barriers, it's definitely more. Okay, another question here. Um, I think it's actually Lisa responding to Megan's question, maybe. Um, but I haven't seen, I can't see Megan's question. So correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, that Megan's question was about the direction of the roses, whether they're going up or down. So that if that's the question, um, it, it doesn't matter terribly much. It depends on what you want the viewer's eye to be doing. So when you choose directions of where you want the flowers to be going, then that's directing the viewer's eye to where you want. Okay. Um, so you know, obviously, the ones right up the top need to be facing straight out and then angling down, because we want the viewer's eye, particularly for particularly for a wedding ceremony, the flowers are not to be what everybody looks at. The flowers are to be what can draw the attention in, but they're to draw then the viewer's eye to the bride and the groom because they're the centre of the attention, not the flowers. Okay? Um, so that's a noisy plane going overhead. Um, so that's that's where you want the viewer's eye to be to be going. Okay? So we're always using line, and that's another element of design in, in floristry um, and universally. You're using that the direction of the flowers to draw the, the viewer's eye. To looking at, at what you want them to. So for instance, a posy arrangement. So a posy is an all-rounded arrangement. We want the viewer's eye to be drawn into a focal flower, which is usually around the centre of the arrangement. And then we use line to draw the viewer's eye all the way around the posy and to stay in it. So it might go back to the focal point and in again. So it stays within the arrangement. Very different to this style, where we want the, the, uh, the viewer to be Looking into this, uh, sorry, Natalie. Okay. Looking into this area here, which is what is void space. So it's empty space, and we're drawing the viewer's eye to that because whoever's standing here is going to be what what we want everyone to look at. Is that all? So I hope that answers. Uh, Lisa will let us know. Um, all right, good question, Natalie. Uh, what what product? Um, can we use instead of wet foam if you're using artificial flowers? So there is a dry foam. Um, we'll grab it out of the store in shortly and show you. It's um, it, it, you can get the Oasis brand in the dry foam as well, and that's what you will use for artificial flowers. So the next flower wall that we make um, is also a really good one for doing with artificial flowers as well, and you can um, use the dry foam for that too. Okay, so. I think we're good. Excellent. I think we're all up for questions. That is looking great. Terrific. So there's just um, like just a few extra areas where we'll fill in with bits of foliage, but we'll we'll access that again at the end and then decide whether we actually want to do that because we're still going to pop in some of the hanging amaranthus and that might just cover it up. So I'll pass them over to Natalie to get started on that side. So in the centre here, um, I'm going to keep it quite short. We don't want it coming down too far. It might be too long. Thank you.
Excellent. That's looking really good. So we're just going to pop in a few more bits of amaranthus and then we'll, we'll complete that one. We'll finish that one. So close up, there's still little bits of, um, of oasis there that we'll cover up. But for the purpose of moving on tonight and getting into the next one, um, we'll, we'll keep it moving. So the girls are just popping a few extras and we'll, we'll bring over the next next uh, arrangement. Any more live questions that you've got here? No? You mentioned that this was more of a, um, a budget yes. setup. Do you have a, a rough estimate of what you ended up spending? Oh, sorry. I'll be, I'll be posting that in the PDF with okay. everything. It'll be priced um, completely. Yeah, which is really good because it takes away a lot of the effort. Sometimes in, in putting together things, you know, the pricing of them can take a long time. Um, it's very necessary to do, however, so make sure you're always pricing your work accordingly and make sure that you're putting your own time and effort in there as well because there's a lot of effort in sourcing product um, and putting it the pre-planning. A lot of people forget how important that is to price in the pre-planning of things. Um, it's not just about what you have to do on the day or even the day before. The lead up and the sourcing of products can take quite a, a lot of time and effort. So really important that, um, that you factor that in. So yeah, the where to and the how much is all going to be available for you. So no problem. Um, have we got any other questions here? Yes, so that's right. Um, Amaranthus is the last last foliage that we're popping in here. So the amaranthus, we're using the green, but it does come in um, that beautiful like, burgundy colour as well. It's like a really rich, almost plum type colour. And it's always available at this time of year. So usually if you're visiting the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show, you'll see heaps and heaps of amaranthus. However, this year there wasn't that much, which I was quite surprised. But um, yeah, usually you'll see lots and lots of it. So that's looking fantastic. Excellent, wonderful. So um, what we do is just to finish off any little bit extra bits of foliage. You can use moss as well to, to cover up little bits if you don't want to put too much other foliage in there, or maybe you're you know you're, you're running out of, of foam a little bit as well. So you can just dot in little bits of moss and peg it in with uh, with wire to make sure it doesn't fall off. Um, and so next we're going to move over to the the full flower of so the flower frame. Um, before that though, for those who are here live, we're going to have a short little break um, and you can grab yourself a drink and something to eat and come back and sit down while we get the next item ready. And for those who are live online, um, this is a great time to, to type in any questions that you've got so that we can answer them for you now. So, alright, we'll have a little break. So, thank you. Sorry.
Okay. So, um, we'll get a seat now and get something to uh, a chair with your drink and something to eat. And um, I'll get seated. Yeah. Terrific. So. Okay. So that everyone can hear us. Um, so that everyone can hear us online as well. Um, we'll uh, all get a seat. Got nice looking wine there. I'll have to join you for one at the end. Um, I'll just briefly talk through, um, you know, a question that I would expect that people have, especially when you start doing it and it's like, oh, hang on a minute, all these little bits and pieces that things that you didn't think of will come up. So one of that is, especially if you're working with a trellis like we did um, first off, it's like, how am I going to stabilise that? How are we going to get it to stand up? So you can get things like this. Um, at, at Bunnings or any hardware store and so basically they become the feet for it. So if you nail or screw them into the base on either side, okay, so of course you need four of them, okay, so that goes onto the trellis and then you can get the trellis standing up straight. I still wouldn't trust these though if you were outside. So you, if you were outside, you would still use these these bags, these sandbags, as weights, okay? Because you still use those. Um, you could do exercise if you do. A good weight. Um, you get very fit being a florist, that's for sure. So if you're only just, or even if you're just really starting out in floristry, if you've been in floristry for, for 30 more years, um, you know, I don't endorse them, I don't get any money for saying it, but get yourself a Fitbit or something similar because you will be amazed and how many steps you do a day in floristry. It is unbelievable. You'll, you'll kill the 10,000 um, minimum steps well before midday. It is unbelievable. So um, anyway, um, going off track. So our, um, our next piece is a frame. So again, if you subscribe to the Butters Club, which I think is currently $47 a month, from memory, $47 a month. Um, that's where you get to see sort of the extra background of well, how, how did that all come about. I'll briefly describe it as best as I can, but pictures really tell, tell it all. Um, so this is an old frame, lovely old frame. Uh, it's actually got a backboard on it. You could take the backboard out if you wanted the flowers looking like they were more sitting in the frame, um, or the backboard can be uh, quite helpful in this case because what we've done is we've used glue um, and some other household items that you'd have anywhere around the house, um, particularly if you like pizza, like I do. And um, then we've put a full foam sheet. So the green foam is completely covered and attached to this frame or the backboard of the frame, in fact. So this is a, a full sheet of green foam, so you can buy it in two different sizes. Um, and so it's about five centimetres in thickness. And um, I, I think that's just over a metre, about a, a metre twenty maybe. Um, yeah, only slightly shorter than me. Um, and then, yeah, we've covered that to the board. So just to speed things up a little bit for tonight, uh, Natalie and Rebecca, uh, sorry, Natalie, um, and Alyssa have covered it in, in some foliage and it's the ivy berry foliage. So if you want to cover something reasonably quickly, I suggest using ivy berry foliage. It does work. Um, it does work really well and it's just got that gorgeous fresh green look as well. And then we've put some um, of the gyp in there as well, the gypsophila. Okay. So for this look we're going with um, all whites and, and pinks, but again it doesn't matter what colours you use and we're just going to completely fill it. So this can be done if you don't want the frame, if that's not for the look that you're after, um, then you can use just a board, which I'll grab. Okay, so it's just a board of MDF that you can get. It's, um, you know, it's not too thin that it can't wobble, um, but it's not too thick either so that you can get staples or um, 
and they are looking through there reasonably easy as well. So you could use a board um, and cover that, cover the board in the green foam bricks. Okay, and of course you just get the board cut to whatever size is required. And then you can use chicken wire. So now let's see if I'm grabbing that. Um, then you can cover. So if you've got the foam covered over this, then you can use chicken wire to cover the foam and put it over to over the board. Or there is another, um, like a, a green netting that we've got there as well, that you could use also. So it just covers the foam, it holds it in place, holds it to the board, and then you can work into that. <laughs> so there's lots of, you know, yeah, lots of do-it-yourself options, and um, and that's the green green trellis. So it's just a it's a, a plastic as opposed to using the chicken wire. But what it also has is much larger holes. Um, to be able to get bigger flowers through. So if you were using natives or something like that, then you definitely go with the larger trellis to be able to get it through. Okay. So thank you. So that's the the board option. Um, and then you could, the, you know, the other options you could use are um, uh, what we've got here is some um, pallets as well. So a packing pallet. Oh, we've got a question here. Yeah. Yeah. Gaffer tape? You could use duct tape or gaffer tape. Mm -hmm. I think they're brands, aren't they? Um, yeah, so you could definitely do that. Pot tape probably wouldn't be um, sufficient. I wouldn't think. I probably just wouldn't trust it. That's all. Um, the other thing that you'll need, if you um, are just using the MDF board in that way, so, so that you can stand up and this foam doesn't slide. I attach one of these to the base. Okay, so if you've got, let's pretend this is the, the MDF board. Okay, um, and then I would nail or attach, you might need to do it up here, nail or attach one of these to the bottom so that the foam doesn't slide out the bottom. So it stays in place. Yep, so it's like a little shelf for the foam. Um, thank you. The Oasis, um, the or the foam, does come with uh, like a little shelf to package it as well. So if that was strong enough, you could use that as well. Um, but I prefer to use the the, the wood or even just um, balsa wood. Okay. All right. So let's check if we've got any questions here. Looks like this. Wonderful community are answering some of each other's questions. So you're all a very special group. That's wonderful. Excellent. All right. So um, let's get the pink roses and the um, hydrangea. So the hydrangea is what we're going to go in with um, first. So hydrangea, if you're wanting it as a base, then obviously you need to, to put it in, in first. Um, however, it is quite a delicate flower, so if you really want it to be you know, the star of the show, then you'd be looking to put it in, in last. Okay? So when you're choosing, okay, what, am I, what order am I putting the flowers in, we usually go with the most delicate flowers going last. That's usually the, the rule of thumb. Um, however, some construction requires us to, to put other, other flowers in first, depending on what the base is. Okay? All right, so we're going to start with the hydrangea. Obviously, they must be on that side, aren't they? No, I've got a pair, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so again, we're working um, with even distribution. It would be just as gorgeous and really beautiful to do groupings through this as well. I have seen that people can do messages as well. So it might be that you'll do, you know, an I and a heart and a U. You know, make that out of perhaps the roses. If you've got a vibrant colour in the roses, um, you might have a message there, or you know, it might be, um, you know, I love you, mum, or whatever, it, whatever your message is, or the person's message is that you're making it for. So that is that is an option. Tonight we're doing we're using even distribution again, and and popping um, it all throughout. So we haven't completely soaked this big piece of foam. Um, it's we've, we've sprayed it. So if it's just for one day only and it's not 40 degrees, then you don't need to completely soak the foam. 
Um, but on other of those other odd occasions, then you would need to soak it. Okay. You won't be soaking it though how you soak most foam because, well, unless you've got a really big bath, I guess you could, but getting it out and without it, it breaking could be a really tricky thing. So you just want to pour the water over it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go in with one of my favourites, my hydrator. Okay, and I want to keep it in nice and short as well. We're not coming out too far. So that, that flower there will depict um, how far we come out. Nothing's going further than that. So if Alyssa likes to come in and work on the back side of the, um, on the flower wall. Right there. Thank you. And we'll get these placed in. Beautiful big heads. If the if the blooms are too big, like so, if I put that in and I decided it's sitting out too far, um, if you can see there, we've got all of the the wax, um, the stems there, and then we can cut them off individually and place them in. Okay. So we won't need to do that tonight. This one's so big and beautiful, I'm going to put it directly into the centre because it will create a lot of dominance and dominance is one of the things that draws our eye in and makes us look at one particular area. So because it's an evenly distributed display or arrangement, um, I wouldn't want to put it up to the end because then what happens is the viewer's eye gets drawn to that and it might get drawn out. We want it to be staying within. Okay. So. In nice and deep. And as you can see, the hydrangeas cover up and fill it up very quickly um, and beautifully as well. Any questions here as we go along? No? Oh, just check in a moment that if we've got any online. That's okay, we're going to pop them in. So this frame is um, standing on an easel for those at home that can't, can't see it. It's on an easel. So um, an easel is fantastic for displaying it. Um, and it's something that if you're going into wedding floristry that I suggest that you purchase um, is an easel and you can hire it out to different events. So it's really handy to have. So how's the food and wine? All good? Fabulous. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Now hydrangeas can be quite temperamental flowers. So you may have purchased some before and it's just like one flower in the whole bunch decides that it's going to go to sleep. Um, so one of the things that you can do is just completely dump the bloom in water. So either a bucket or a vase, turn it upside down and give it a really good zest of water. If it's, been, if it's gone to sleep and you've been maybe away for two days, it's too late. Generally, but it's worth a try. But if it's just been maybe overnight or during the day and you've come home and you've noticed it, um, then do that. Also, if you give them a really good cut, so they like to be, they actually like to just float in water as well. So if you've got a beautiful fishbowl vase, just put a little bit of water in the base and um, cut the head off, and that would stay. That would last for at least two or three weeks that way. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, beautiful. All right, we're all done with the hydrangea. So it already looks nice. Just finish it off with a bit of um, extra, <laughs> <laughs> extra ivy berry. Um, so the next flower that we've got to bring in is um, what Natalie's holding here, and that's the gorgeous um, chamomile. It's so pretty. Okay, so gorgeous, pretty, dainty. It grows really easily as well, so you can grow your own. Um, grow your own. It's just um, very pretty. So we're going to pop that in, I'll give you that 
punch to start with. Thank you. And again, we're just evenly distributing it, but I probably want to see a little bit more of it um, around the edges because it's it's really light and dainty and, and pretty. So. Question. Okay, great question, Megan. Thank you. When we spray the um, foam, so spraying the foam is just with a water spray bottle, which Natalie might be able to um, find for us. Um, so you can use a big pump spray, like a weed spray, which is what we use, or you can use just a small, like household water spray bottle um, that you might use for. Um, I know I use them for spraying moss, um, but also you, know, you might use it for the iron thing. I don't know. What else would you use it for? Anyone got any ideas? No? All right. So we'll um, water in the terrariums is uh, the moss in the terrariums is especially good. Thank you, Thank Natalie. You. Mm -hmm. um, so that they're vegan, that spray bottle, I think they're like about a dollar at um, IKEA. And not that IKEA need a plug. And then we've got, so this is the big, like, pump weed. It's used for spraying um, weed pillar or weed spray as well. We certainly don't use it for that. Um, just purely for spraying water. So you just pump it. And then it sprays out. I think it's a pretty good pump. And it sprays in that way. And then you can just switch it off. So they're very handy to have. And then um, Natalie, kindly uh, start trimming some of the low sets, the pinks. Yes, thank you. good at is longevity. So they're not long lasting. So like for instance that one I'm just going to toss out. Um, so yeah, not not the longest of lasting the flowers, but so pretty. Pretty and I'm sure very calming as well. I had them at my um, front along the front path for quite a while at home. With the idea that maybe everyone would calm down because they're coming <laughs> into the house. I don't know if it works, but let's try. But they certainly feel good. As all, do, as all flowers do, they um, definitely know how to make us feel good, not just in their visual beauty. But it's also the what you can't see as well. So it's that invisible beauty that they carry, which is their energy, that makes us all feel so wonderful. All right, nice looking along. Looking good. Excellent. Put the bottom there. Okay, so we'll start getting these roses in. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Beautiful. So we're using the leaves and the blooms. Okay, any questions? Here as we're going along, yes. Um, because we're holding it on with um, some glue and um, some other structures as well, which yeah, 
you'll be able to see in, in the PDF a bit clearer and, and get a better understanding of, of how that sort of happened. Thank awesome. you. I've got one, thank you. Roses, I should say, these cluster roses. Um, these are locally grown in hothouses. Now, because they've got multiple stems on them like that, if I was just to poke that in, it wouldn't actually go into the foam far enough, and so it would be sticking out, which would look really odd. Um, so the beauty of the cluster roses is that you can just cut um, cut the heads off individually. So just they're nice and strong. These stems, they're not weak. So they're strong enough that they'll be able to go into the foam on their own, which is really good. So just evenly distribute them through. Okay, Wendy. Sorry that you missed the um, sorry that you missed the hydrangea reviving tips. So we will um, post those out so that you can you can hear that again. Um, but basically, it's just to um, give that bloom, the actual head, as much moisture as possible. So you can completely dump that um, into the water. Okay. So it's really starting to come together now. Beautiful. Thanks, Natalie. Okay, so it's a matter of evenly distributing and you know having um, a good eye and a good stand back as well. So you need to get right back and have a good look at it from all angles to make sure that you're um, evenly distributing and that there's no there's no areas where you're missing um, one particular colour, size or shape if you're looking at those elements. Question here. Um, you were saying that you are able to evenly distribute them, but with these cluster roses, would they be okay to put away the parsley? You could, absolutely, yeah. That, that's a really good point. So I could make little groupings um, within because what happens with that is that it still then um, it still creates a lot of dominance for that flower. So yeah, that's a really good point. You absolutely can do that. You can definitely, yeah. Right. And so because I've done that in one area, I'll then make sure that I go through and do that in other areas as well. So thank you. And then we've got two more things. And then we've got those pink dahlias. Oh, thank you. So you're not working from biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest or anything like that? No. You, you can. Um, generally, I like to work with one flower variety at a time. So uh, some florists, and it works that way for them, it just doesn't work that way for me, um, is that they might work on a section at a time and just move their way through. Like they might start at the bottom and move up, start the, start the top and move down. They might start in the centre and move out. Um, I, I prefer to work with one flower variety at a time and work that all the way through and then start with the next variety and work that all the way through. Um, it just works good for me. You've got to play around with it and see what works best for you um, because it's yeah, it's different for everyone. So that's where that practice, 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 practice is really important because you'll get to understanding what works for you and your style as well. Okay. Well, will those other roses eventually open up for you or will they still remain the same height? 
Um, the rule of thumb with blooms is that if you can see colour in the bud, it's going to continue to open. However, there's a few variables that come into play. For instance, it has to have sunlight and it has to have water. So here there's not a great water source. If this foam was completely soaked, then yes, then it was going out and it was getting enough daylight, then yes. But if it was for an evening function and we made it that day, then, then the likelihood is no. Yeah. Um, but it is something that you need to anticipate if you're making something ahead of time. So if you're making something, um, you know, the day before, two days before, and it's, you're working with lilies or something that's going to really open up and, and change, it's going to change the look of the arrangement afterwards, then you have to anticipate that and keep that in mind. Tulips are a really good example if you're putting them into bouquets because they keep growing um, when they're in water. And so it looks horrible to see a wedding bouquet that was made one or two days prior and then the bride is carrying it down the aisle and the tulips are sitting up here and all the other gorgeous flowers are sitting down here. So anticipation of what's going to happen next is something that we have to think of in floristry and flower arranging. Okay. So we've got those beautiful dahlias as well. We're going to pop them through. These are such a stunning, gorgeous colour and they're going to add quite a lot to this arrangement. So what they do is, is a couple of things. They add great dominance to the display. They give it a bit of a wow, but also um, this gorgeous peachy colour that works beautifully with these roses. But what we also have, the benefit is that this yellow centre in some of them then also brings out these gorgeous chamomile as well. So picking your flowers and you know, hand-picking when, when possible um, is fantastic so that you can get this. Sometimes when you're ordering over the phone or online, you, you don't get to see the variations in colours that flowers offer us and give us. So getting into the market, getting into the wholesalers, you know, for those who are lucky enough and have direct um, contact with growers as well, then that's fantastic. Um, but wholesalers are great in the markets because you get to be able to see the full variation of what's available at any given time. And nature brings the right colours together for us perfectly. Sometimes when we try and pre-plan pre too much, um, colours don't quite work in our favour. So nature does it beautifully, just leave it up to nature. So um, Alyssa and I are going to get these dahlias again, just evenly distributed throughout. And work with, again, work with the flower. So for instance, you can see here this dahlia, the, the bloom of it's pretty much straight down the line of the stem. Now if I force that too much, I'm more likely to snap snap it. So I'll work with it instead and I'll put it into the side somewhere um, so that we can work with the stem. Now we haven't got a lot of them, so we want to be careful with the distribution of them. Um, it means that we, we need to be you know, more mindful of where, where we're going to place them um, and when you've got less of something. When you've got lots of something, you just know it's going to fill up and you can just, just go for it. So this we're going to, going to make sure that we've got some in the centre and some on um, all the way around as well. So we're going to go get one in here. One big one, so we want to get that quite centralised. And if you have to move other flowers, then, then that's totally fine. So I'm going to move this little grouping of roses here so that I can fit it in. Because I think that animal can go in there next to its big friend. Okay, so we've got one left, so we want to make sure that we get that in the right spot um, and also we'll have a good look to see, do we need to move any of the other dahlias as well. So let's have a quick step back and have a look at that. We've got one 
area here that we need to most definitely fill in with. Um, and that one there probably just needs to come in slightly, that's all. So maybe we need to there. So another tip is if you're, um, you know, usually these things are going to be photographed at some point. So if you're not sure on placement of things, take a photograph of it. And sometimes just viewing it on a screen is actually easier to be able to see. Um, and at least you know then in the photographs it's going to look, it's going to look great as well. Okay. So we'll just fill that in um, a little bit more. We've got some more jib that we'll fill in with. And we've got some gorgeous orchids as well, which would pop in, and they're going to change the face of it again. So it already looks great and lush and gorgeous as it is, but um, again, I find it hard to stop, so we can always keep going. <laughs> Thank you. So we want to keep the jib reasonably short. So that helps to fill in really nicely any little spots there. So it looks like we've got a question. Okay, so approximately how many bunches did you use of the cluster roses? That was four bunches of cluster roses, Lisa. Um, and Megan, why are we adding dahlias as the last flower when they have the largest head? Very good. So great question. Um, and it comes back to that rule of delicate flowers last. So um, the, the dahlias are so, so delicate and fragile. Uh, so that's why they're going in last. And we just we made sure that we have room and places for them. Or as you might have seen also, there was one little grouping of roses that I actually moved because I wanted to put a dahlia in there. So there's no harm in doing that. So we're nearly finished here, nearly wrapping up. Before we put in the orchids. So those who are here, um, you're able to take photos as you have been. So you might want to take a photo of this one before we put the orchids in, just because it's going to look quite vastly different. Thank you. Get it out of your way in a minute. <laughs> All right. So a quick pick so that we're not um, using up people's time. Okay. Sorry. And um, yeah, and so that would be uh, fully completed with a little bit more foliage. As well, so we would put more of the ivy berry in to finish that off. Okay, um, but that's sort of the boring finer details that you don't don't really need to see here tonight. So we're going to pop in some of these orchids. Um, now you can put them in using these water vials, so they're a little bit long for this for this purpose. Um, however, I'm going to angle some of them in, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. But these are fantastic because the orchids, any of the orchids. Particularly the Phalaenopsis as well, if you're putting them in in single blooms, um, and these are the Cymbidium orchids, they much prefer to be in water than in foam. Okay, they won't they won't do well at all. So uh, you can get these. They're in two different sizes. The the longer stick, they've got really long sticks as well, so you can use those for the shorter ones. Um, so we're going to again evenly distribute these, but if you wanted to go with, with grouping, then you can definitely do that as well. So I'll angle this in so that I can show you how to insert that way. So it just goes straight down through the foam and it sits out facing us. 
it has, the orchid has a very obvious um, a very obvious face to it. It's either looking at you or it's got its back to you. And all flowers actually do. They have they're either facing you or they've got their back. The roses and carnations are a little bit trickier to tell, which is their front and back, but you can most definitely. Um, so the, the rule of or the rule of thumb, or again, the, the job of a florist and a flower arranger is to make sure that whoever's looking at the arrangement, that the face of the flower is looking at them. Okay. So a few more things. that way. So we want uh, one here, one here, yep. Top here, we want one there, and we could, we could put one through the top, and I'm going to pop another one into the center as well. Okay, great. So, thank you. We need one on the long stick for there, so we could put one in there. Holding place. Terrific. So that finishes off the flower wall. As I said, we will finish off with a little bit more foliage. Um, but that's it. So I hope it's been valuable information for you. I promised I would talk about the Butters Club and take any other questions as well. So, firstly, have we got any other questions here in the room tonight? Whilst we're, no? All right. See if anything else comes up. Um, we have got a very good question here. Once the wall is finished, okay, so when it's finished, um, would you collect it again afterwards? So, again, that's a discussion that you would need to have with, you know, between yourself and the client uh, because they might want to take it home. Uh, it, it's totally up to them and so you need to discuss that with them and, and work that out. But certainly, yes, it, it's not not um, not what a regular thing. You wouldn't. It's not a regular occurrence that you would just leave it there. So you would definitely definitely take that. So um, before I talk about the Butters Club, I want to bring in um, Alyssa, and um, Alyssa owns Thrive Flowers and Events in July. Oh, it's not in July. It's in Geelong. <laughs> here in Hollywood. Come on in. And Alyssa. Um, has made some absolutely amazing, stunning flower walls. So I suggest uh, checking out you know, her blog and website as well. So thriveflowers.com.au. Um, thrive yep. So worth checking them out. Um, I know some of the students here actually who have been lucky enough uh, through our intern program to work with Alyssa and learn from Alyssa and her team. Uh, so yeah, very talented group. They recently did a very large scale flower wall for Jolie. Jolie. Yeah. yeah. So how many hours did that take to make? Um, and how many people did it take to put it all together? There was up? three of us. Uh, it had to be set up by eight o'clock in the morning, so we're at Chadston Shopping Centre. So we had to get there at four AM. Rachel was part of that. So there was three of us. I think it took three hours. Wow. For three of us, which was a good time. We had to do it quite quickly. So we're under the pump a bit. And, okay. and it was 2.5 metres long by 2 metres tall. Yeah, so wow. it's actually so quite big. Yeah. yeah, very yeah. good. Wow. And so there was, there was a lot of foliage, like beautiful foliage in that. Yeah. 
Um, I'd be very surprised. It was a mixture of, because it had to last a whole week, so it was a mixture of um, magnolia, leather fern, and ivy berry, okay. and camellia. Oh, right, yeah. so a nice mix of Yeah, foliage. so we had a big um, a base of foliage, and then we had a cluster of roses. So Jalik's a hand cream company, so they, we had a big, um, like, two metre tall Jalik hand cream coming off the flower wall, mm -hmm. and we had to make it look like the flowers were coming in and then down through out the tube at the bottom. So it was, all, it was clustered, basically. It yeah. was all garden roses, day blossoming. It looks stunning. Yeah, it was That's pretty so amazing. Yeah. 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 It's right. on our Facebook and Instagram. If you want to How did you um, erect that then? Um, so we've actually got a freestanding flower wall that we've made oh. that comes clicks together in a few different parts. Um, Jalik had to build a frame right around it so that you couldn't see the back of it because it was mm -hmm. seen from all sides. Um, and so it's just made out of plywood and um, pine, basically. And we used a lot of these um, bats. We just drilled them on in places and followed. We had lots of long pieces of foliage and short pieces as well. So the long pieces would cover the distance of, because there's probably only about eight, eight bats that we used, but yeah, it's okay. such a big space. So we had mm. long foliage um, right. coming across this way rather than out. Beautiful. Yeah, it, it looks stunning. Yeah, <laughs> terrific. Thank you. Okay. We'll just check if anyone online's got any questions. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, so this would be a great question um, for Alyssa to, to help answer as well. So, when um, you're constructing your <coughs> flower wall, so can you bring your own buckets and flowers in and do it on site? So sometimes you absolutely have to do it that way. It's, mm. it's at times the only way. Yeah. Um, and we have to true do that. to that, yeah. that job, right? Yeah, we have yeah. to do it all on site because our van won't, you know, you need a massive van to be able to fit a two and a half metre long mm -hmm. wall. So we have to construct it on site, put it all together, pretty much build it, and then um, attach the bats. We pre, we made everything, made sure everything was soaked, and uh, we took buckets and buckets of flowers and yeah. did it all on site. So it creates a lot of mess as well. There was a lot of water, so we had to um, make sure that we had lots of towels and a tarp. And because once you've got, because it was um, fresh roses, they had to last a while, so everything had to be fully soaked. So once you're putting on in all the foliage and the roses, all the water comes out somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure you're prepared for that, which we were. Which was right. We had about ten towels and yeah. rugs and everything. Because so. yeah, you've got to keep in mind your own safety and the safety yeah. of the team that are around you as well. So you know, even though here you see there's a bit of mess um, made, even though we're working into bins, it's, it's still you know bits and pieces that fly around yeah. um, and can get pretty messy. So yeah, all right, thanks, Alyssa. Thank you. Great, thank you. So the Butters Club, I promise I would tell you about it. Um, it's it's I think it's going to be an amazing community um, that's you know reasonably new and starting. So you'll be coming in as, as founders. This is our third Butters Club. Um, so that, that's really exciting in itself that we're just, just getting started, but the community is really starting to build, which is wonderful. And it's really going to be a place where, you know, you can come in, you can share your ideas, you can ask questions, because it can be pretty lonely being a florist on your own sometimes. You need to be able to share those ideas and, and of course, get those questions answered as well. So it's a perfect forum for doing that. Um, but also get the questions answered from myself and, and professionals like Alyssa and Natalie and the rest of the team at Bloom College as well. So we're all here to, to answer those questions for you um, and, of course, you know, see what's most up-to-date and latest. Um, so for those of you who are online, you can click um, to join. And then for those of you who are here live, we've got the forms for you to get started and get ready and join us because I'm really looking forward to what else is evolving and what else is coming up and, and coming ready for you all. So um, so if we haven't got any other questions, we're going to get, get finished up for the night. We're going to stick around here and have some, some wine and cheese and nibbles and, and get keep talking and get some, some more questions answered. But for all of you online at home, thanks for joining us. It's been a blast and, yeah, look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. I'll just check if there's any last minute questions online because there's a 20 second delay for those guys. So um, last, I think it was the first time. I was like, okay, we're finished. And then all these questions came up and I was already gone. <laughs> I forgot about, forgot about the 20 second delay. I was pretty nervous for my first time. So. Yeah.
hopefully everyone forgave me for that. So, um, so yeah, thanks guys. Please help yourself, as I said, um, to, to any drinks, food, nibbles. We'll be here um, if you've got any questions on anything. The forms for you to fill out, if you wish, um, we're going to hand them around and there's, um, they're up at the top there as well. All right. I'll just check if there's not any other questions. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're still live. Okay, so yeah, a couple of last questions. Um, so how long is the Founders Prize? We're hoping as long as possible. Um, so we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly is for now um, and, and at least into the, next, into the next week. But what happens with the Founders Prize is that it stays at that price. So if you come in at the $47 a month, then it stays at $47 a month for as long as you want to be involved. So if you decide three months down the track you don't want to do it anymore, that's fine. But then you decide you want to come back in, then if the price has changed, then it's changed. But if you come in at the $47 a month and then you stay in for six months or 12 months or however long you want, then it stays at that $47 a month. So hopefully we'll be able to you know, keep it at that price um, for as long as, as long as possible or forever. But that's, that's what it is right now. So... Um, I hope that helps to answer that question. So thanks, Wendy, for that question. Um, and yes, yeah, so non-Australians, absolutely, it is most you are most welcome. Um, it's it is a global community, and what's going to be really exciting about that is that you know we're we're going to love to hear whatever um, whatever tips, advice, and and also questions that you might have, and vice versa. So it's going to be a great way of sharing information globally as well. So. Thank you, Lisa. So I think that might that might be it. All oh, good. All right. So we'll finish online um, now. Yeah, we might just need Bill, your assistance. Because it still says. 